How does cooking prepare you for life success? We'll find out in the next episode of the Food Experience Unplugged video series. Welcome to the Food Experience Unplugged video series. I'm Michelle Seidling. Today we are honored to be here at the Way Cool Cooking School with the president, chief dishwasher, and owner, Lynn Elliott, nestled in the Valley of Minnesota. Lynn, thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you for coming and visiting. Oh, this is such a unique cooking school. Thank you. Will you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, we are a, a cooking school for families. So we do kids classes, we do adult classes, we do parent and child classes, um, we do corporate team building, we do school field trips, scout troops. So we're all about making cooking inclusive and bringing everybody together in the kitchen to cook. So you've got such a diversity of, yeah. of people and events and um, what are some examples of different events you have going on? Um, well, we do kids' birthday parties, which is very fun um, and something different. There's so many um, different places to have birthday parties around the Twin Cities. Um, but the cooking birthday parties are super unique because the kids get to learn something, have fun, and then eat what they actually made. We nice. have about 23 different birthday party themes. Okay. And in each theme, the kids make um, three different cooking projects. Uh, there's a birthday cake included, a couple chefs that work with them. Nice. It's all hands-on and tons of fun. Now you are very passionate about cooking. Mm -hmm. So where did that spark come from? Uh, where did it start? My, uh, my grandfather and grandmother owned a restaurant when I was a kid. Um, two of them actually. One was a small cafe and the other was a drive-in with car hops and everything super fun. Um, and ever since I was like six, seven years old, my grandmother would have me in the kitchen cooking with her. I had my own little stool that I would take and butter all the toast and <laughs> she would um, let me help her make um, soup and she was famous for her pork and dumplings and sauerkraut dish and I would get mm. in there and help her make all the dumplings. and. I learned so much about cooking, just being alongside her. Um, she never used this recipe, so that was a hard way to learn how to cook. But um, I learned lots of tips on um, how to put different ingredients together, how things are supposed to taste, and tasting food along the way. And a lot of what I do here today and how I teach stems from what my grandmother taught me when I was a small child. Um, and I worked in the kitchen with her till I was like 16 years old and got my first job at Bridgman's being an mm -hmm. ice cream uh, scooper and mm -hmm. waitress. Um, but I have, all my life I've been in some aspect of food um, from waitressing to working in the food service when I was in college um, till after I graduated from college being a food broker. I've been in food distribution. There's really not many aspects of the food business that I haven't um, experienced, learned about um, over the years. And I think that's what's great about being able to teach others all that information and passion that I've learned throughout the years. But it's definitely my grandma that it all stems from. All right, go grandma. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Did the, your other siblings uh, help out? No, that's kind any? of a funny story because my sister is two years younger than me and um, my grandparents had a um, cafe in Montgomery, Minnesota, which is you know like a 45 minute drive. And every Friday we would leave and then we'd spend, as a family, we worked in the restaurant Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so my sister, who's two years younger than me, she got stuck washing the dishes all the time. <laughs> um, she never really had a passion for um, cooking and never really wanted to learn anything about cooking. Um, when I opened the cooking school, um, I was looking for people to come help me. And you know, you always turn sure. to family first, right? And sure. so um, 
my mom came and um, I have two sisters and my one sister who's a couple of years younger than me um, started helping me in the kitchen okay. washing dishes first oh, um, nice. but throughout, <laughs> throughout um, her working with me over these last uh, 14 years um, she has really learned to be a really good cook uh, because at some point in her life she actually figured out that you can't mm -hmm. really go through life not cooking yeah, right somebody course. you got to learn how to do it, especially mm -hmm. when you have children and you got to feed people and um, so she's really turned out to be a good cook from um, being part of this and my other sister um, Amy has is seven years younger than me so she was always really little when we were doing any of the cooking when we were younger okay. but as she um, as she got older, um, she started cooking um, more and more and kind of has a passion for it too. Um, she has kids who've been in sports a lot, so it's always been, her focus has always been about trying to make sure the kids have enough food to give them energy to get through school all day and running to sports for three, four hours and sure. then coming home and doing homework. And so um, it's kind of been a family affair uh, with food with us all our lives. So how did the school get started. Mm. Why Way Cool Cooking School? Um, well, that's kind of a fun story. My, um, I had been working at a job um, as a VP of marketing for a food distributor um, for seven, eight years and kind of was burnt out on the whole thing, had gone through several mergers and just reached a point where I really wasn't loving what I was doing anymore. And um, one day I just quit a six-figure job. Would not suggest this, but I did. <laughs> and um, I tried to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I took all the different kind of experience I had, what my background was, um, and tried to figure it out. Um, and this was at the time that Food Network was just starting on, on television. And um, my daughter at the time, I had one that was 10 and one that was five. And my 10 year old and I were fascinated with Food Network. It was like we just were obsessed <laughs> watching it and watching it. And the next thing that came out of her mouth was, where can I go and learn how to cook? Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, there must be places you can take kids to go cook. You yeah. could take them for soccer lessons, painting, you can take them for hockey. You know, there has to be cooking, right? Sure. Um, and so we went to a couple of the cooking schools in town and she was super intimidated because they were for grown-ups. You know, there wasn't anything designated for kids or she, it, she felt out of place with it. And so I went back after we had done our little um, research and finding out that there really wasn't anywhere she could go take cooking lessons um, and started looking online and found out there were some kids cooking schools popping up in um, New York. Okay. And I was like, huh, I wonder, I wonder if I could open a cooking school in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking to a bunch of different people about it, getting input from people on what they thought, and everybody kept telling me, oh, it's such a great idea, that's so cool, you've got to do it. <laughs> so I wrote a business plan, I spent a long time on my business plan, and um, it's a business plan that I have actually lived out for 14 years now and it's worked okay. because I think I did do my diligence on on figuring mm -hmm. it out um, and it's um, it's evolved since I first started it I started out being just a kids cooking school um, and after the kids started coming and the parents were dropping them off I kept hearing well couldn't I come here with my friends Mm -hmm. um, can't I bring some of my work friends here, my work, mm -hmm. do work events here? And I kept thinking, well, this is my business. It can be anything I want it to be. <laughs> sure. And so I started evolving it to doing um, dinner parties. Neighborhoods would come in and we'd mm -hmm. cook together. And then it started bringing um, companies in and we would do team building activities. Um, and slowly it started going to, we're about 50-50 now, 50% 50 kid events, 50% okay. um, adult events. Um, and it's a beautiful mix because the more I think about it, um, I don't know if I want to do kid stuff 24-7, you know, no. I'll tell you, it's nice to have a little break, cook with some adults and do that, and then 
a lot of times it's fun to just go cook with the kids instead of being with the adults. So it's sure. kind of a nice balance um, on um, doing all the things I love together. So. so how do you inspire creativity with food and cooking? You know, I think that kids themselves are very creative when it comes to cooking. If you let kids just do what they want to do in the kitchen, they will make some very weird stuff. They are creative. <laughs> um, they try and duplicate things they've seen on TV or on YouTube mm -hmm. and stuff. But I see that there is creativity there. I don't think that you have to inspire creativity. I think you have to take that creativity and turn it into um, something delicious because it's, it's easy to make a cake look cool and beautiful with fondant and stuff that might not taste very good. Yeah. Or make a cupcake but put a big glob of frosting on it and stick all kinds of things in it. Nobody wants to eat it. <laughs> so it's kind of finding that balance between um, creativity and um, understanding all the properties of what goes into building that cake or cupcake and balancing flavors and um, I think that's the thing that's hard to learn um, from a YouTube video or on watching a cooking show is that you see it happen but you don't really understand um, what makes those things happen like the chemical reaction to different properties when you put them together and that's mm -hmm. the fun thing I think to teach people is the why. I've, I'm, I'm one of those people that if you tell me I can't do something or um, you, you know it's not supposed to be that way, I always want to say why. Why, why is that? Sure. And I think when you ask the why, you, under, you, you become better. Um, baking has always been something that has been really hard for me. Okay. Um, Baking requires you to be um, a little detail oriented, kind of anal <laughs> about putting things together in a certain way. Um, and that is not my personality. I like to just kind of throw things together and um, kind of put my own little twist on things. And so baking is hard, but after learning all the, the properties of why things work the way they work, mm -hmm. I have become a much better baker over the years um, because now I understand the why. Mm -hmm. So you're not necessarily creating or creating that creativity, you're kind of channeling it to different yeah. foods? I, I mean, I think people na naturally are somewhat creative. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't think people who aren't creative like to cook, to tell you the truth. Most people mm -hmm. who like to cook have a creativeness within them. Um, people who, you know, want to put a meal out maybe, not so much the creativity when we're just trying to feed our kids. But if you want to really dig into a recipe and make something, you will have to have that kind of desire to make something beautiful and creative and so I think that's just kind of inside, and you can't really teach people that to a degree. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Are there any examples that you can think of of how they've um, been inspired and bringing out that bring inner... out creativity in people? Yes. Well, I think I think when you give, um, we play nailed it with people. I don't know. Are you familiar with that show? No, it's not. a show on Netflix. It's very cool. Um, and there's a professional baker that makes something, whether it's a cake or a cupcake or a bar, and they make it beautiful. And then the home cook or whomever is participating it, their challenge is to duplicate what they just saw. Okay. Rarely comes out exactly. Like <laughs> and Not and that's kind of what we do here a lot too. Is mm -hmm. um, kind of put give them the inspiration okay. for what they're doing um, and and then let their creativity come out and how they want to put things together. Um, we have cupcake wars here a lot um, and that's a good example <laughs> of letting people do their own creativity on it um, from them making their own type of cupcake to having a theme about uh, mm -hmm. like we have a Halloween theme going on this weekend with okay. cupcake wars and then there's sprinkles galore and 
eyeballs and <laughs> worms and spiders and anything mm -hmm. they want to kind of create mm -hmm. that vision that they have in their head on okay. the cupcakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So have you, um, do you have any stories about how that, that creativity, they've, you know, duplicated something at home and yeah. maybe you've, you've heard about it? I, I don't know about, I would, I'm not sure about so much about the creativity, but I know that there's been tons of examples. Um, we run a summer camp here where kids come for four days and they cook three, three items, three to four items every okay. day. Um, so by the end of the week, they've learned, you know, 12 to 14 different recipes. Okay. And um, I get so many comments from parents like, oh my God, this is the best thing I ever did. <laughs> my kids, I come home from work, they're making me dinner. Um, I'm not scared for them to use a knife anymore because <laughs> you've shown them how to do it safely. Sure. And, um, and again, I think it goes back to when kids and adults gain confidence in the kitchen and feel um, comfortable with what they're doing, then they can let that creativity come out a little bit in whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. I think confidence in the kitchen is huge, um, mm -hmm. especially if people are scared of doing things. Um, you see a lot of times people are reading a recipe and they think they have to do it exactly like it says on the recipe. And just because I cook a lot, I'll look at it and go, you know, do you really want to put two jalapenos in that? <laughs> and some people will say, well, that's what the recipe says. <laughs> and I'll be like, but do you really want to put two jalapenos <laughs> in that? And just understanding that a recipe can be a good guide, but it doesn't have to be the rule. You don't have to do it exactly, except for sure. baking. Like Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does the expression positive food experience mean to you? Oh, um, I think a positive food experience um, is, I think, I think that's a, a, a vague term. To me, um, a positive food experience as a kid was being together and having dinner together mm -hmm. as a family. Um, you know, mom calling us in and everybody had to be at the table, no excuses like, I don't have my homework done, or, you know, um, I'm running off to Jenny's house. It was like, mom said, it's time to eat dinner. You sat down and you had dinner together. And just that time, no cell phones, just family time to come together. And I think that creates a positive experience around food. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a positive attitude toward food um, is really important that parents, brothers and sisters even sometimes, can really influence how another person in the family feels about food. Sure. When somebody says something negative about that asparagus is gross, <laughs> and a parent says, I would never eat asparagus, mm -hmm. ick, well, mm -hmm. a kid's not gonna try asparagus, sure. right? Um, and so I think it is trying to not instill your own personal um, feelings about certain foods and creating a positive about all foods, okay. especially fruits and vegetables that, you know, there's so many things that you can get um, fruit wise, vegetable wise, that even 10 years ago, we didn't even have access to here in Minnesota, that there's so many more different things out there. But if you don't try it and you don't experiment and taste it, um, then it's hard to create that positive food experience. When people are, kids come here and sometimes they'll tell me, oh, I just want, we're making spaghetti and we make spaghetti sauce together. And then they'll say okay. to me, oh, I just want noodles. Hmm. I go, but you just, you just made the sauce. You tasted the sauce. Did you like the sauce? Yeah, I like the sauce, but I don't want any, I don't want any of my noodles. That's, that's not how we eat it at my house. We just have, mm. I just get to have naked noodles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's just some, somewhat about um, that parent maybe letting that kid always do it. I've actually had a mother stop me from putting sauce on her kid's noodles okay. and say, <laughs> "My, don't put that on there, she won't eat it. Mm -hmm. And I served it to her with sauce on it, and she ate the whole plate. Mm, but the it. mom was doing a preconceived feeling on it, like, she's not going to sure. do that, so don't even give it to her. Yeah. Right? Not creating yeah. a positive 
food mm -hmm. experience of trying something because spaghetti is different by whoever makes it because there's so sure. many different things that can go inside of it. Um, so I'm always a big preacher of just take one bite of it. If you don't like it, fine. Yeah, so you might like it again. Yeah, you might like it six months from now mm -hmm. um, because our taste buds change all the time. And um, I think it's just important to be positive, not I know when I was a kid, I had to sit at the table um, for like four hours because I didn't clean my plate because um, I wouldn't eat a certain thing. That was not a positive food experience. No. Um, and so just letting kids try and keep giving them a positive attitude to trying things. And that goes for adults too. Some adults aren't open to trying new things either. Um, and I just think you always have to keep an open mind um, and keep trying things and you might be amazed at the new stuff that you like. To learn more about the Way Cool Cooking School, please visit their website at waycoolcookingschool.com. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Food Experience Unplugged video series. For more information, please visit our website at foodexperienceunplugged.com and be sure to follow us on social media. We look forward to seeing you on Food Experience Unplugged, where food, fun, and memories come together.